Hey everybody, it's Jay, and I'm just out here about to paint some more, so I'm not mic'd up or anything. But a few people asked me about painting Chris Bartocci's Colt Correction, BRN 601, which is a Colt 601 reproduction. I'm painting his furniture set uh, over there at Small Arm Solutions. And um, basically, all of the furniture sets were done ready to be boxed back up, or correct, really ready to be cured and then boxed back up. When a paper towel brushed up against the wet top coat on this one, forcing me to completely strip it and start over. But because a few people asked me what the step-by-step -step process was, I figured I'd go ahead and record it. I have both pieces here just to kind of show you what, uh, what the original looks like and then what the completed project needs to look like to be pretty close to the original 601. So here's what it looks like in the sun. A few people pointed out that they didn't really care much for the gloss. I tend to agree, actually, on guns. Glossy furniture just doesn't work very well. But all of the Colt 601 examples that I've seen have pretty glossy furniture. And the idea of this is not to make it, quote-unquote, look good for a practical firearm, but to make it as close to the original as possible. If we were going for practicality, I'm sure we probably wouldn't even have green furniture to begin with and also probably wouldn't be using a an AR-15 that is based on a pretty outdated design at this point and has a fixed carry handle with no consideration for optics mounting. So yeah, we're going for authenticity here more than um, tactical readiness, I guess. So I'm going to start here with this Krylon Color Max. Satin Italian Olive. I don't think this step is really necessary, but the reason why I'm doing it this time is I thought this color would be close enough to the 601 green to use instead of the Model Master paint. Um, and this is supposedly more durable, and that was the thing with the Model Master I was a little less excited about was it definitely didn't seem suited for using on a, a gun that's going to be going to the range and bumped against tables and all that stuff. Um, in the extremes of heat and weather and so forth. Um, so I tried that, but with Colts, or with uh, Brownell, let me keep doing that, with Brownell's revised color scheme on this furniture, there actually is almost no difference um, whenever this is painted on from a color standpoint. It wasn't quite dark enough, so I ended up doing a base coat of this, wasn't happy with the color, and then did all of the rest of the coats with the Model Master paint. I apologize for the sound. I'm again. I'm not mic'd up out here. So, um, so because I did that on the first batch, and I want this furniture to match up perfectly, I'm going to go ahead and do one light base coat with this, and then come back out with the um, with the Model Master for the rest of it. So, all right. So the pretty light base coat is put on now. basically just to make the color that I'm starting with even across the board and uh, give me a good starting point. So recoat time with both the Model Master and with the Krylon paint that I'm using is under 10 minutes. So I'm going to go set a timer for about 10 minutes and come back. Uh, the sweeps that I'm using is kind of a like that, back and forth, pretty hard to capture with one hand. Um, so uh, some people, I have heard some people say use much longer s strokes. I was taught whenever I worked at a body shop uh, to be a little little shorter with it, but just smooth and even back and forth to get a nice even coat. I am not a paint expert, so I'm not going to tell you how to do it. That's just what works for me. So I'm going to let this sit for another nine-ish minutes and come back and hit with my first coat of uh, the Model Master Dark Green. First coat is on, I put it on a little heavier than I would have liked, but one thing I figured I'd go ahead and call out now is you can see how thick that one spot is. Basically when I was painting this one end cap side, some of the overspray got on there and it made that a little heavier. But you want to be really careful when you're applying your coat because um, especially on a kind of rounded object that's a little bit uneven like this. 
the paint's going to try to pool. So you have to be really careful not to overspray and end up with runs. Now if you get a run, it's not the end of the world. Um, typically what I'll do is go ahead and let it cure and then wet sand it out and reapply the reapply the coat to touch it up. And you can usually get it to blend perfectly well to where it's not noticeable after the fact. Um, in fact, one of the pieces, I actually think it was the other hand guard had a run in it. Um, I just knocked it down after it dried and uh, and touched it up. So first coat is on a little heavier on this coat than, like I said, I would have liked. So I'm going to come back on the second coat here in about eight minutes and do a much lighter coat. And then about three more coats after that to get it to the right color. Focus camera, please. Thank you. I'm not going to record each step from there because it's not going to really be any different than this from that point forward. I'll show what it looks like at the end whenever we've got it set up to cure. So coat number three, second coat of the Model Master is on. Now you can see it's kind of starting to come together now. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out is one little helpful hint. Um, at least that's, again, that's been helpful for me. I'm not a professional. Is uh, get you a cardboard box or something or... An old, uh, an old shed you don't care about or whatever it happens to be. And between coats, um, I, I'll go ahead and spray a little bit onto that just to make sure that the nozzle isn't clogged up or um, there's not any spatter or anything because I have had that happen. Um, when you get ready to store your can, um, depending on the paint, but a lot of times you can just tilt it upside down and kind of blast it a little bit to get some of the extra paint out so it doesn't clog the nozzle up. But I always like to start by putting a little light coat on a cardboard box just to make sure, again, that there's not any kind of globs or anything that they're going to come out and land on the project and make me have to start over. So I wanted to point that out now that we're on coat number three and um, probably we'll come back after coat number six is on. Okay, so the sixth and final coat is now on. Pretty good on our color now. The top coat will help protect it also make it an appropriate level of gloss right now. It seems glossier than what the final product will actually be. But you can see it came, it came out pretty well. A um, couple of uh, additional tips I thought about as I was painting. Um, we had a few dust note motes pop up on here. You can see a little bit there. But I'll tell you if you're doing this for the first time, don't try to get that dust off when the paint is still wet because you're just going to make it worse. Um, it's a lot easier to take care of dust that gets onto the wet paint after the fact than it is to try to get around a fingerprint or paper towel or whatever it happens to be. The other thing too is whenever we do our wet sand, most of that stuff is going to get buffed out anyway um, immediately, immediately before the top coat. So don't stress out too much if it happens. Um, like I said, the wet sand will, will pretty much just uh, buff all that out and then we'll cover it up with the top coat anyway. So the other thing too, is whenever you're doing these, you need to pay special attention to the spots that are laying against your surface. I tend to overlook those spots. So um, whenever I'm painting, everything looks good. I go back and look and the spots touching the surface tend to be um, not coated extremely well. So you wanna make sure that you get low enough. I usually start low, so aiming kind of for the, the seam there, and then work my way up and just kind of layer on so you don't end up with any overspray. The important thing to note, whether it's with the dust or anything else, if you make a mistake, whether it's you're painting plastic or steel or finishing wood, you're almost never going to be able to make a mistake that you can't correct. So if you make a mistake, don't stress out too much about it. Um, just uh, just try to fix it later on. Even if you have to let it dry, sand it out, and touch it up, or if you have to just strip it and start over. I mean, it, it's going to happen. You're going to make mistakes. But um, rarely are you ever going to actually ruin a piece um, for from finishing or painting. So best thing to do is just try it, learn from your mistakes, and get better each time you go. So I'm going to bring this in and let it cure for a few days. It's about 50 degrees out here, sunny right now, which isn't ideal. 
Um, very windy. It was about 18 yesterday. So that's kind of Arkansas for you. Tomorrow it's supposed to rain. It'll be cold again next week, I'm sure. So it, we're going to bring it into dry after the gases are gone. So basically after just the intense smell of the paint has faded away mostly, that's whenever I'll go ahead and wet sand and then do my top coats, do two clear coats. So I'll see you again here in a few days.